Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make interactable objects that work perfectly in multiplayer. This is going to be building on the previous two videos, the one with teleportation in multiplayer and the one just setting up, setting up norm core for use. I hope you enjoy, and if you do, I'd love it if you left a like and subscribe because I'm going to be making many more of these. Let's begin. So first things first, we're just going to want to make an object to store our gravable objects on. And that's just as simple as making a cube, resetting its transform down to the center. And let's just move it off to the side a bit. And we can just shrink it and then bring it up a little bit and make it red. Then from there, we're going to put a sphere on the top of it, which is going to be the ball which we can catch. And we don't really need to rename it, but we're going to put it there. Get the ball back here. Uh, let's shrink it down to 0.1 scale. point 0.1. And just place it on top of it. So this ball right now, when you create it, it comes with a sphere collider, a mesh renderer, and this sphere filter which is the standard Unity things. But what we're going to need to turn it into a real-time component is to go into Add Component and search Real-Time Transform. And this is a norm core object which allows the object to be synced across all clients. So now we've added the real-time component to the object, you'll see it has some options. One is the real-time VR player, which is this already, that's already put in for you. One is prevent ownership takeover, and that prevents other players interacting with it if you own the object. And this will come up a bit more later, but it's basically, it's so that if you're moving the object, other people can't move it, and it makes, uh, it makes things a bit easier in multiplayer. So for example, your local player, that's owned by you, and other people's players, that's owned by their clients, so you can't move it. And this destroy when last client leaves option, what this means is the object won't keep its position in between sessions. So if everyone's left, the object will reset its position, basically, and be reinstantiated by the next, when, whenever the next user joins. If you turn this off, however, the object will stay in its position that it was left in last time. Okay. Then we also added in this real-time transform, and we can go in here and we can choose which objects we want to, which parts of the object we want to sync, the position, the rotation, and the scale. I'm going to leave them all ticked, but of course, if for some reason you didn't want that, you can turn that off. Then we've also got smoothing, which is how the, the server is calculating or your client is calculating its move between positions in case of packet loss. So not all the data has been received with your client. You probably want to leave that as interpolate, but you don't need to if you don't want to. Okay, so this is a ball which will be synced up between clients. The next thing we need to do, though, is to make it grabbable. To make the object grabbable, we need to go into it and attach an XR grab interactable script to it. And this will just work right out of the box. Uh, we don't really need to touch anything in here. What may be interesting to you is the difference between instantaneous velocity tracking and kinematic. And this just affects how the ball interacts with your hand. And I'll show you a bit more about that later. I'll, in fact, duplicate the ball now and make two more copies. Move them both to the side. Move, move the, so we've got ball one, ball two. Yeah. Ball one, we'll switch to a kinematic. And velocity tracking is the final one. Okay. So now you can see we're in VR, we've got the teleport like before, but we can also use the Ray Interactor along with our teleport anchor as before to pick up the ball. Now of course this isn't perfect because as you could see this thing is still touching it which is not what we want at all. And also to be honest we don't we don't really oops we don't really want to be able to grab it from a range. I mean maybe you do for your game but we don't want that. And another problem you could just see right there is that although we can grab these balls, if we let go of them, they teleport back to their original position. And that is because, and that one is really unhappy about it, 
And that is because we don't own them and we need to request ownership of them on grab, basically. To do this, we're going to have to apply a script to all the balls, which we're going to call grab request. Put in lowercase rather than uppercase. And then we're going to open it up in Visual Studio or your editor of choice. So now we're going to create the grab request script. And for this, we're going to need access to the real time transform of the component, which we will right in here and we're also going to need to get access to the xr grab interactable component which we're going to get access to here and neither of these exist in the local environment so we're going to just hover over them and import normal dot using normal dot real time and also using unity engine xr interaction toolkit at the top Okay, in the start method, we're going to write real time transform equals get component real time transform and xr grab interactable equals get component xr grab interact. Okay, and that's it for the start method. Then the update method, all we need to do is call if xr grab interactable dot is select xr grab yeah dot is selected um to check if the object is currently being hold held and if it is being held all we're going to do is request ownership of the object and what this will mean is that when we test it out on the scene you'll be able to see that we can actually grab it now okay so now we're back in VR and we can test it out. We've got the instantaneous, the kinematic and the velocity trackball. So normally the instantaneous object, um, the idea behind it is when instantaneous is on, it's turned off all its colliders and you just pass it to the balls. However, I noticed something strange and I'm not sure if that's a weird interaction with the multiplayer thing is it's not meant to be able to interact with other objects, but it appears to be able to push, that, push this one just fine. And I think it can move this one too, even if it is a bit, weird about it so i'm not sure what's going on there that's what the kinematic one's meant to do so the kinematic one you can push through walls as you can see and this one can directly interact with them a lot easier than the others whereas the velocity tracked one will not go through walls and if you try and push it through it will just get stuck on them and this is of course really nice because it makes things feel a bit more real it really helps add to the immersion okay the only problem is now, I mean, I've thrown them all off the edge, but we don't really want to be able to grab them with a ray, or at least I don't think that's the best option. We want to be able to grab them directly. The other problem is, as you saw, when we try and grab them with the ray, the ray stays on all the time, and that doesn't look very good. And also, you run into a problem of, if the ball's rolling along the floor and trying to grab it, you're just teleporting around, like so, and it's that's a real pain to deal with. So what we're going to do now is split up the left and right hand controllers into two separate interactors because you can't have both an XR ray interactor and an XR direct interact from the same object. But before we do that, we're going to quickly just change the teleport to be on the primary button on the controller. And we're going to rene rename them both to left ray and right ray respectively. Now we're going to add in two new game objects as a child of the camera offset and we'll just add one for now and it's going to be left direct because it's going to be our direct interact with the left hand and we're going to need to add an xr controller device based which we're going to make sure is on the left hand we're going to add a xr direct interactor as well and then we're going to add a track pose driver which is what allows the object to get the position of our hand. We added one in in one of the earlier videos and we're going to add one in again now. And this is for the left controller, as you can see. So now we're just going to duplicate this. We're going to rename this to right direct. And then within this, go into here, change this to right hand instead, and go down to here and change this to right controller. Okay. 
Perfect. Now, all we need to do is go onto the left and right direct interactors, add a box collider, shrink it down so it's not so big, and we're just going to put it at 0.1. That worked in my testing, but you might want to pick different values for yourself. And then set them to is trigger so that they don't collide with the objects. And then go into the XR rig and switch the teleport ray button from grip to primary button. Save your scene, press play, and you'll be able to now, once we connect to normal core, we'll be able to use our primary button to teleport around in the same way that we could with the grip before. And we'll also be able to grab our objects and they'll be able to work properly. And, you know, we won't need to use this anymore to grab them. The only problem is right now, that's all fine, that all works. But right now, if we point our interactor at them, we actually still grab them, which isn't what we want. To fix this, we're going to create two new layers. First of all, on the balls, we're going to create a new layer called interactable. And then we'll already create the next layer now, and this is going to be called ground. Okay. So all these balls, we'll set them as interactable. And then both the teleportation area and teleportation anchor will set to ground. Okay, and what we're going to do with this is make it so the rays can only interact with the ground and the direct interactors can only interact with the interactables. So now we go into the left and right ray and you'll see in here, here, the interaction layer mask, we want to switch this to nothing just to clear it and then we'll set it so it can only interact with the ground. And then also just set this ray cast mask also to ground. And I believe that's everything in there. I just wanted to check to make sure I'm not missing anything. And then we go into the left and right direct interactors, go into the interaction layer mask again, nothing, and switch this one to interactable instead. Now, if we test this in VR, we can still teleport around because we didn't change it. But now the interactor, if we get back in the right position, it no longer interacts with these balls. As you can see, it's not blocking them anymore. Maybe you do want to block them. Maybe you do want it to block the teleport, in which case I'll show you how to do that in a second. But also we can still grab these. This still works. We can knock them into each other, which is nice. We can teleport around. Right now we can teleport inside here, and that's the problem I was mentioning a second ago, so we'll just fix that quickly. To solve this, it's a simple matter of just going back in here where I did this and just setting this back to everything. You can do it either way. It's whatever you prefer. It depends if you what you want them to teleport through. Maybe you want them to be able to teleport through the balls, but you don't want them to be able to teleport, for example, through this object. In which case, you could give this thing a different name rather than... You could, you could give it a new layer. Say, for example, we added another one called Scenery. And then we just applied Scenery to this object. We went back into the left and right interactor and we still only wanted to be able to interact with the ground but we want the race cast mask to be both ground and scenery and now when we go into the scene you'll see that when i hold the right button this now blocks them again well the balls don't if i get it at the right angle so let me get closer to show you you see that the balls the balls don't block it, basically. See, it can pass straight through them, whereas it can't pass through this. So that means you can have obstacles for your player while still having these interactable. And the best part is, these are now multiplayer. We can teleport with them as well. And if you had a friend here, you could play catch with them. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've been able to follow accurately and that you've now got VR balls which you can throw around in multiplayer and you can play catch with them. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do in the next video, so if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see, I'd love it if you could leave a comment below and I'll get right to it. At the very least, I'll reply whether it's the next video or a future one. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.